What's up guys, it's the big video today. This one is the Gervonta Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz breakdown. So, we're gonna get all into this fight. Um, I'm gonna talk about what each fighter has been doing coming into the fight. Um, like basically, the, you know, uh, how, they're, how they're rolling into it. <clears throat> I'm gonna break down each fighter, what style they need to implore to win. Um, if they can win by knockout, if they can win by decision, I'm going to go both sides. And then I'm going to ask the big question, who do I think wins this fight um, at the end of the video? This fight, though, just recently got rescheduled. So just so people know what's going on. Um, it's not happening October 24th anymore. It's happening a week later on Halloween night, October 31st, Showtime pay-per-view. Javante Davis versus... Um, Javante Davis versus... Uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Um, undercard should be decent. You got Regis Progray on the undercard. That's a co-feature. Progray's badass. You guys will like him if you haven't seen him. Um, very good fighter. He's currently number three at 140 for me. So, uh, you know, and, and he's going to be a superstar. He already kind of is on some kind of level. From New Orleans, got a lot of power and can box too. Um, lost in the World Boxing Super Series last year um, by a majority decision to Josh Taylor in a big unification bout. So, um, you know, gun, the, dude, the dude is a badass, though, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing him. Rest of the undercard, I'm not too sure about right now, but let's get into the big fight. Let's get into Davis versus Santa Cruz. Now, first off, if people forget, this is for two championships in different weight classes. So this is a very rare kind of fight. Now, let me explain what that means. They will be fighting at 130 pounds, which is junior lightweight or super featherweight, whatever you want to call it. I usually call it super featherweight. Um, they're fighting at that weight class. Now, Leo Santa Cruz holds the WBA super championship at that weight class, 130. But the WBA regular lightweight title will also be on the line because Davis is the lightweight champion, the WBA regular lightweight champion, which is 135 pounds. But both titles qualify to be on the line because they are technically fighting under the lightweight limit, even though they're going to be fighting at 130 pounds. So I hope that makes sense because this is a very rare case. I, I Personally, I don't remember this ever happening in my lifetime, this kind of fight, where two separate titles are on the line just because they're fighting at the lower weight class. So... Um, you know, that's what's going on. Davis is going to have to cut weight in between, you know, cut weight and come down to 130. He says that's not an issue. We'll see. Um, let's start with breaking down each fighter. Let's look at Gervonta Davis. I think he's the uh, projected favorite coming into this fight, undefeated. Um, he's now a three-time world champion. He captured uh, two different, he captured titles twice at 130 pounds. And then in his last fight against Yuri Arcus Gamboa, he won the vacant WBA regular lightweight championship at 135. Um, you know, rolling into this fight, obviously he hasn't fought this year at all in 2020 because of COVID. Uh, the last time he fought was at the, I believe at the end of December last year, he took on Yuri Arcus Gamboa, main evented at a Showtime card. And, you know, it wasn't his best performance. Um, coming into that fight. Uh, earlier in the year, he scored a couple impressive knockouts against low-level competition. Um, he was supposed to fight Abner Mades in February of last year, 19. He ended up fighting for, uh, former 122-pound champion Hugo Ruiz, dominated him in one round. Then he took on some, I can't even remember the guy's name. He took on some, another nobody-type fighter in um, July, stopped him in two rounds, and re you know stayed champion at 130. Then he moved up to 135 in December against Gamboa. Gamboa is 38 years old, you know, um, and Davis was coming in, you know, moving up to a new weight class after struggling with weight at 130, you thought this would be the thing. Well, he didn't come in disciplined. He came in overweight at first for the fight um, against Gamboa. He ended up losing a couple pounds, but, you know, he just had a Adrian Broner-esque type style in the ring. He didn't throw a lot of punches against Gamboa, and he had an injured gazelle, and he didn't get into lion mode and go after him. Um, uh, Gamboa hurt himself in the second round, hurt his ankle. And um, 
he fought like that all the way till the, I think, 11th or 12th round before Davis finally finished him. But, I mean, the guy was hurt. He's an older fighter. Um, he's a fighter that, you know, he gave um, Crawford a hell of a fight back in 2014 at 135. But, man, that was also, what, five years earlier? You know, I mean, the guy was 33 when he fought Crawford. You know, he's 38 now. And I just, I don't know. I thought, I just thought it was a lazy lackluster type performance for Javante Davis in his last fight so I really wasn't impressed so he's coming into this coming off of that he knows he needs to be disciplined a really disciplined because this guy's missed weight at 130 a couple times he had to forfeit um his title the first time he had to forfeit it before he fought on the Mayweather McGregor undercard um he had to give up his world title before that fight um on that undercard and he has just always struggled with weight at 130. So the fact that he's coming down to 130 for this fight, man, he's got to be really disciplined and get down there. He says it's not going to be a problem. That's what he says. Um, there are major fines in the contract if he does not make the weight. So he has to make the weight for this if he doesn't want to get fined like a motherfucker. But, you know, um, I'm not sure how disciplined he's going to be. It is the biggest fight of his career by far. I will say that. Biggest opponent he's going to be fighting. Um, I think he's taking more of a risk to come down to 130 than he would if he was fighting more comfortable at 135. But I think Leo Santa Cruz made that the point. So, you know, one, he's got to be disciplined. That's huge coming in. He's not coming in rolling off of a great performance, you know. So that's two things right there. Let's get into the most major thing is what kind of style, though, does he need to have in this fight with Santa Cruz? Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think early in the fight, I wouldn't press it against Santa Cruz. Now, Santa Cruz isn't a big puncher, but Davis doesn't want to get caught. We don't know how his body's going to react to getting down to 130 again. So if I'm Davis, because he's fast and he's strong, I'm the counter puncher in the first few rounds of this fight. I let, I let Santa Cruz come to me, see the speed, see how many punches Santa Cruz is going to throw off, become the counter puncher, because Davis is, in my opinion, he's stronger. So, you know, but if he's going to have strength issues, he's going to need to carry that into the late rounds with the weight and stuff. So, you know, why not test out Santa Cruz the first few rounds? Of course, you don't want to let him win the rounds, but test yourself out. It's been a long time in between fights, you know. See how well you can do um, and, how, and the kind of fight that Santa Cruz is going to bring to you and then let your hands go after that, you know, towards the middle rounds. But I would establish my jab. Um, and I would move and I would counter punch and try to land those big bombs, you know, that he, that he can throw, but not go into a full on trading war with a Mexican fighter like Santa Cruz. I wouldn't do that. I would box, use my speed advantage. And, um, you know, that, that's what I think Davis needs to do to try to win the fight. Take, you know, if he can't end it early or hurt him early, take him into the deep waters and, and, um, you know, see if you can put on enough consistent pressure and counter punching to hurt him, beat him up, and to try to stop him or, or gain a significant lead on the cards. So that's the kind of style of fight I think Davis needs to do. I think he needs to box, set himself up, um, you know, and save that energy for the late rounds in case making weight is an issue. So um, that's what I think Davis needs to do to win this fight. Now, do I think Javante Davis can win the fight by knockout? I do. I really do. Um, Davis is a big puncher. He really is. His record shows that he's hurt a lot of people. Um, you know, Santa Cruz, though, can take a punch. But Davis, I don't think he needs to be afraid of Santa Cruz's power. It's the accumulation and wearing him down he needs to be afraid of. Um, but I think Davis needs to worry about, um, definitely needs to worry about, uh, you know, trying to, he, he, I don't want him to, I don't think he should get into a war with Santa Cruz early. But I think he needs to get. I think he needs to make an impression and let Santa Cruz know that Santa Cruz isn't just going to come in there like a buzzsaw, like he does so many times and has done so many times. That Davis is going to box him, that he's going to, um, you know, and land a big punch to keep Santa Cruz honest, um, you know. And that's uh, so. Do I think he can knock him out? I do. I think, and I think that knockout could come at any point. Now. Santa Cruz, if he's having weight issues, it might be a little tougher. You know, he might have, it might be tough on him trying to make, um, you know, if he's uh, trying to land that big shot. But 
Um, that's why I think he needs to be somewhat cautious early to go if he's going to go after the knockout. Spread it out. Don't try to just go for it all at once unless you have a golden opportunity and you can actually hurt the guy. I would try to use my timing and land a big punch that Santa Cruz doesn't see coming and then um, go from there. But I do think he can knock him out. Um, the later the fight goes, I think it's going to be a more an accumulation and a breakdown to stop Santa Cruz. But um, I, I definitely think he's got the power to knock him out at any moment. And I think he has the skill to completely break him down and outbox him. But will he? That's the big question. We don't know yet. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what kind of style um, he brings out with. But I do think he has the ability to knock him out. Now, do I think he can win this fight by decision? Um, yes, I do. I think he can beat him by a decision. Um, you know, uh, he's got, you know, Santa Cruz is probably going to throw more punches though. So the punches that Davis throws, are, they're going to have to count every time he throws a punch and he's going to have to jab. He's going to have to use his jab and his counter punch, punching abilities if he wants to walk away with a clean decision. I think a close decision, it's going to, you know, it's going to, it, it's going to, um, how do I say it? It's going to be a difficult if he wins a close decision here. Um, you know, because Santa Cruz does throw so many punches and is that the kind of fight that he wants to get? Does he just want to get out of there with a with a close win? I think Davis needs and wants to make a statement and win cleanly. If he can't win by knockout, he's going to want to win a one-sided decision. So um, I think, yeah, he definitely needs a box, but I think he can win by a decision. But for some reason, I think if this fight does go to the scorecards, um, that, it, that it could be close. I definitely think so. So, um, you know, he's going to want to try to break him down and knock him out. But he can win a decision, in my opinion. Now, what is uh, the other questions? What does uh, a win mean for Davis here? A win is everything. Davis is the one that needs this more than anything, in my opinion. Um, he's coming into favorite. If people want to believe that he's, that he's the next big thing, if he wants to sell himself towards uh, a showdown with Lomachenko, which uh, he says he wants, possibly in 2021. Um, you know, he's going to have to win impressively against Santa Cruz. He's the bigger man coming in. You know, I think people are expecting him to win and they're expecting him to win impressively. And, um, you know, so I think he needs to win this fight clearly. And, and, and you know, and, and if he can win by a knockout, it's going to be huge for him. A decision... Either way, whether it's close or big, um, a bigger one, of course, helps his uh, case even more. But if he wins a close one, um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to hurt him. But, uh, you know, I just don't know how good we're going to know he is if he doesn't win this fight by a blowout. So uh, he definitely needs a big win here. And I think he needs a big win more than Santa Cruz needs a big win. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on with, with him right there, with Davis. So now let's switch over to Leo Santa Cruz. What guy, So Santa Cruz coming into the fight, you know, been a slow last couple of years. I mean, he really hasn't done anything since the rematch with Abner Matis. And even that win, it was like, so what? He already beat him once. First fight was a good fight, but people make it out like it was a, a Barretta and Morales type fight. And it wasn't. I'm sorry. The first fight was good. It was uh, back and forth the first half of the fight. But the second half of the fight... Santa Cruz boxed more, and he kept um, and he used his size and his length advantage, and he cleanly outboxed him the second half of the fight. I didn't think the fight was all that close at the end of it. I had it about eight rounds to four, and I thought they were solid, and I thought he was a clean winner. And then, so going into the rematch, I didn't see a point in a rematch, but they fought, and the rematch was pretty much more of the same. I mean, it was kind of one-sided, and then they're saying oh, well, let's call for a third fight. Like, why? There was no need for it. So that was his last, you know, win against the name. But if we're talking about significant wins, it probably, you know, in terms of the guy, one of the top fighters at the moment when they fight, it was his win over Carl Frampton, which was the biggest win of his career. And that was in January of 2017. So in 2019, you know, he took on um, a couple kind of low-level fighters and, you know, there was a competitive fight against Rafael Rivera back in uh, uh, February last year. And then I can't even remember the guy's name that he fought in um, November last year. But he got a decision and got the super championship at 130 for it. You know, he didn't deserve to fight for that belt, but he got it. You know, because the WBA is so corrupt. So, you know, I mean, 
Uh, he's rolling in, not really, you know, being the dominant fighter and everything. He still has a good name, um, you know, a big name. But, you know, I'm just not sold on Leo Santa Cruz the way everybody else is. So, you know, coming into this fight, he's not really rolling with a lot of momentum, hardcore momentum, uh, to win the fight. He's coming in the smaller guy. He did, the one thing he has working in his advantage is forcing Santa Cruz to fight at one, I mean, forcing Davis to come down to 130 to fight him. I thought that was a very smart move on his behalf right there uh, to get Davis to come down and wait because Davis struggled at 130 before. So I really like his decision to make Davis come down. Um, that being said, there's big, as I said, there's big fines uh, for Davis if he does not make the weight. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that breaks down. But let's let's look into um, what Santa Cruz needs to do to win this fight, the kind of style he needs to implore. Um, I don't. I think Santa Cruz needs to be the old Santa Cruz. I think he needs to come out guns a blazing at first. Um, maybe not be too careless and get caught by something big because Davis is a strong fighter. But I think if he fights in the middle of the ring, um, yes, he's he's longer. But I think that's a mistake if he fights in the middle of the ring with Davis. I think Davis is faster. He's a better boxer. And um, if if they're if the less punches that get thrown by Santa Cruz, I think the less likely of a chance he has of winning. Now, I don't think he needs to go balls to the wall and just expose his chin and go right out there at him. But I think he does need to have an effect of aggressiveness coming forward, throwing combinations and throwing a lot of punches that are going to sell the rounds. Because if he took a look at Davis's last fight, um, you know, against Gamboa, Davis wasn't throwing a lot of punches. So he might be able to win rounds just based on effective aggressiveness. So we're going to see um, how that breaks down. But I think Davis has a pretty good chance of pulling off the upset here. I mean, of um, I think Santa Cruz has a pretty good chance um, of uh, disrupting things with Davis and making it his kind of fight. So um, if he can do that, he just needs to make sure he doesn't get caught. But I definitely think he needs to do that. And as the fight goes on, he can get more aggressive, swarm him a little more. But I think that's the kind of style of fight he needs to have. Um, do I think Santa Cruz can win by knockout? That's the next question. And my answer is yes. I think he can win by knockout, but it's going to have to be an accumulation of wearing Davis down because Davis and the weight will be a big difference. And, you know, just sheer uh, inactivity, not fighting a lot of rounds for Javante Davis. If Santa Cruz can fight his style fight and not get too beat up and damaged uh, heading into the second half, I think he's got a chance of stopping Davis if Davis if he can wear Davis down and tire him. But he's got to be able to do that, you know. Um, he's got to be able to put his foot on the gas pedal at the right time and wear down uh, Davis and stop him. And so I do think the chance of a knockout is pos is there. Um, can he win by a decision? You know, yeah. It depends on what kind of fight. I I'd be surprised if um, nobody gets hurt in this fight. I really would. Uh, Davis is strong. Santa Cruz wants to make an impression. I, again, I think I'd be surprised if somebody doesn't get hurt. But I can see Santa Cruz winning a decision, but I don't think he would win a blowout decision against Davis. I think it would be close. So, yeah, I can see it, but I think it would be a close decision if he were to take it. Okay, and um, what does a win for Santa Cruz mean? It means everything. I mean, Santa Cruz beat Carl Frampton back in January 2017 to regain the title. He's got the wins over Abner Mattis, but... I really think this is the kind of uh, fight he needs to, um, you know, continue to get the big fights and to pretty much kind of let everybody know, like, I'm one of the best around, you know, pound for pound, one of the best around. So I think this is the kind of fight Santa Cruz needs for that. But um, losing the fight, I don't think it would hurt him as much as it would hurt Davis because Santa Cruz has been around. He has one loss on his resume, a close decision, but... I don't think people are coming in with Santa Cruz, their idea of Santa Cruz being the favorite in this fight. So um, if he were to lose, it wouldn't hurt hurt him as bad as Davis. But it also depends on how he loses. If he gets caught and he gets hurt really bad, that could just uh, destroy his morale and his, you know, his attitude. And um, he might not be able to ever recover from that. So a close decision, you know, kind of loss, that wouldn't hurt him too badly. But a big knockout loss or a, a blowout loss where he really gets hurt and beat up, that really could take a toll on him. So, you know, we'll see. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now the now the question is, who do I think is going to win the fight between Gervonta Davis and Leo Santa Cruz? 
Man, it's a tough one to call. Uh, not who I think is going to win so much, but really how do I think they're going to win? Um, because Davis hasn't fought at 130 and been successful, you know, against a big name in, you know, in a while. And, um, you know, and really he's, I don't really think he's ever beaten that big of a name. So to make the weight and to be impressive, it's going to be a tall order, but I think he can do it, but it's going to be a tall order. Um, Santa, you know, it, it's tough to call, but I'm going to pick Javante Davis in this one. I think he is going to come in disciplined. I think he's going to be impressive. I can see him winning by an early to middle rounds knockout win. Um, I do believe this fight potentially could go late, but I think Davis knows he has to be impressive and he has to make an impression in this fight. I really think he knows that. And I think he's going to put his foot on the gas pedal and go for it. I really do. Once he sees that Santa Cruz can't hurt him early, um, I think he's going to move. I think he's going to box. I think he's going to land some big shots. And I think he's going to hurt Santa Cruz. I do. And I think he's going to knock him out. So I'm going Gervonta Davis to win this fight by knockout. Early to middle rounds. Um, could end late. And it definitely could go to, to a decision. But I'm going Davis by knockout. And he will be a two-weight world champion um, after he does that. And that's what I think is going to go down. So, all right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was the... Gervonta Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz breakdown video. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.